Well, we have quite a bit to discuss weather-wise, but right now we're not really seeing anything on our radar, but we did see a few stronger storms across our easternmost counties earlier this morning, but that's going to be changing as we go throughout the day. We are tracking our next system, which is going to, which is, well, it's already bringing pretty strong winds to our region, and we have a wind advisory in effect until 3 o'clock tomorrow, or tomorrow morning, and we're also tracking the possibility of record highs today, and we're already seeing temperatures likely into the upper 70s across much of our region, and all this is going to be bringing strong storms to our region as we get into the overnight hours, and behind this, we are tracking the possibility of a very cold start to our Wednesday, and across the region, right now we do still have that wind advisory that it's in effect until 3 a.m. and that's because we are going to see sustained winds of 15 to 25 miles per hour with gusts up to 40 miles per hour and right now sustained winds in Canada are at 25 miles per hour 20 in Sykeston 13 for Paducah and 22 for Carbondale and when the factor in the wind gusts we're seeing wind gusts right now of 37 around Kennet 30 around Sykeston 30 in Cape Girardeau 32 for Carbondale and 25 for Harrisburg. So this is all helping to warm our atmosphere up and we're seeing a little bit of clearing back towards the west and we're already seeing temperatures in the mid to upper 70s around Farmington and around Piedmont, lower 70s for Cape Girardeau, Sykeston and Carbondale and we're still sitting in the upper 60s in Dixon Springs and in Harrisburg. But our temperatures are going to be warming up as we go throughout the next couple of hours and we should be getting pretty close to the upper 70s and even lower 80s for a lot of us by the time we make it to the middle of the afternoon. And in terms of those wind gusts, we're going to be seeing those peaks somewhere around 33 to 35 miles per hour as we get into the afternoon and overnight hours. And you are going to want to keep that Storm Track 3 app handy because we are tracking the possibility of a few strong to severe thunderstorms that are looking more and more likely. And by the time we make it to 2 o'clock, I think a lot of us are going to be in the low to mid 80s back towards the west, 70s further off towards the east where we see those clouds linger on for a little bit. And then we all should be into the lower 80s by the time we make it to about 4 o'clock this afternoon. And by the time we make it to 8 o'clock, this is where we could start to see a few supercells thunderstorms start to develop and then they're going to be tracking off towards the east southeast across our region and then once that cold front starts to knock on our doorstep I think that's when that line is going to form and the supercells are going to turn into a more of a linear threat and they're going to track off towards the south and towards the east as we go through the overnight hours and temperatures behind that front are going to be very cold for your Friday or for your Wednesday morning with temperatures expected to be into the 20s. Now we do have a level three severe weather outlook for all of southern Illinois except except for Mount Vernon and Jefferson County and also into Perry County, but uh, further off towards the south and towards the east, all the way to the Kentucky border. We're now included in this level three risk and then a level two risk further off towards the south. And within this, we can see damaging wind, large hail, and a few tornadoes are certainly possible. And where we do see those tornadoes are likely going to be with those discrete isolated supercell thunderstorms. And that's also where we could see some damaging wind and also some large hail. And in addition to that, where we do see those stronger thunderstorms develop, we could see additional rainfall totals of about one inch to maybe three quarters of an inch across our parts of our region. But I don't expect a widespread uh, widespread totals of about an inch and even though our wind advisory is set to expire at about three o'clock tomorrow morning we still could see those gustier winds tomorrow morning with wind gusts of 33 miles per hour before those wind gusts finally calm down through the afternoon hours tomorrow. So overall temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler for tomorrow with highs only into the lower 40s by the time we make it to the afternoon and our high will likely be coming tomorrow at about midnight while all those storms are going on and we're going to see those temperatures get back into the mid to upper 60s by Saturday, low 70s for Sunday and we should be remaining dry. But overall we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on that system that's going to roll through today. We're going to see those first start out as a few maybe stronger supercell type thunderstorms later on this evening before they come become more of a line as they go through our region. And we're going to see a high tomorrow of about 66 degrees in the afternoon hours, 40 degree or 66 in the morning hours, I should say 40 degrees for the afternoon hours, 48 for Thursday, 52 for Friday, and we'll be seeing the 60s return for the weekend. So we definitely have to keep our storm track three apps ready, keep the wireless emergency alerts on and just make sure that you know how to stay safe for storms because they're going to be coming through in the overnight hours. Well,